Hello friends, welcome to Butterfly Meadows Home and Farm. I'm Dorinda. Doesn't this sandwich look delicious? It is made from 100% whole wheat bread. That's right, 100% whole wheat. And it is soft and delicious and easy to make. And I'm going to show you how to do it in the bread machine. Now remember the recipe will be in the description below. So as I go through these steps, don't worry about writing down all the ingredients. It's in the description below, easy to get to, and there'll be a link to a printable version, hopefully as well. We are gonna take some of our ingredients and we're gonna put them in a small saucepan and we're gonna put them on the stove and bring them up to about 100 to 105 degrees. And they'll probably get hotter than that and we'll just let them cool off but we're going to heat them a little bit and what this does is it jump starts the process because when you're making whole wheat bread the reason whole wheat bread turns out dry and dense and and all of those things that we don't like is because whole wheat is slower to do all of the things that white bread does in a nutshell that's basically why um, so it's not too difficult to overcome most of that if we bring the temp the temperature of the ingredients up a little where they're warmer because the warmth increases the speed that all of these things happen. So it's just a little bit of science behind why the whole wheat turns out the way it does. So we're going to take, we're going to need one cup of water. So we're going to measure out our one cup of water. Whenever you're measuring, you're want to, going to want to be eye level with the measurements on your measuring cup or they'll you might get a little bit off. Also going to need one fourth of a cup of milk. I don't have any regular milk. I do have some half and half, so I'm going to use half and half. That just increases the amount of fat that's in the milk, and I'm okay with that. I don't think it's going to harm the outcome of my bread at all. So I'm going to get one-fourth of a cup of half and half or milk. I'm going to add that to my pot. And I'm going to need three tablespoons of sugar. You can also use honey if you want. Um, honey, you know, sometimes it would give it a really nice flavor. I found that this bread tastes great just using sugar. So that's one, two, three tablespoons of sugar. And I'm going to move this pot out of my way. And then you're going to need a half a teaspoon of salt. And I'm using pink Himalayan salt. But you can use any kind of salt. It does not have to be pink Himalayan. And we are going to also want one fourth of a cup of oil or butter. Find something to measure it in here. This should work. It had the milk in it, but that's okay. So I need one fourth of a cup of oil. You can use melted butter. If you're using butter, that's fine. I would melt it just so you could measure it a little easier. And then we also need a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now I know that's not a normal ingredient that you would put in bread, um, but it just really does something for the flavor of this bread. You can leave it out if you want to. I also need a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. And that spoon is wet, so I'm going to eyeball half a teaspoon with my teaspoon measurer. You ever do that? Now 
let me make sure I've got all my ingredients. Okay, we also need one third of a cup of our whole wheat flour. Now you can use any kind of whole wheat flour you want to use. This is one I get at the bulk store and it is a finely ground whole wheat and that's the texture I like. If you want coarse ground, uh, coarse ground, then you go ahead and use the one that you like. And of course we're going to need two and a half teaspoons of yeast, but I'm going to wait. Don't put that in yet. We're going to wait before we put that in. Now I'm going to take this over to the stove, turn my heat to um, about medium high and with a whisk I'm going to stir everything up and then I'm going to add in my one-third of a cup of my whole wheat flour and we're going to heat that too and this will help to release some of the starch from the flour which gives our bread a head start which is what we need when we're working with a hundred percent whole wheat. We want it to boil um, we just want it to come up to about 105. Now it's if you're like me it's probably going to get hotter than you want it and that's okay um, as long as we haven't added our yeast yet it's okay we can let it cool off so you can just heat it up and you can test the temperature with your finger if you want um, since our bodies are 98 degrees normally um, you want it to be warmer you want it to feel really warm but not hot and or you can use a thermometer and check the temperature I'm probably just going to use my finger today I have used a thermometer in the past because I wanted to make sure I wasn't going to kill off my yeast. Okay, at this point it feels really warm. So I'm going to set that off of the eye. So I went ahead and off camera moved some things out of the way because I want you to be able to see. Um, and this is, I can put my finger in there, and it's warm, but it is not too hot. It feels just right. Now, like I said, you want to make sure, so if this is your first time, you may want to use a meat thermometer or some kind of digital thermometer to check the temperature, because the last thing that we want to do is kill our yeast. Now, we're going to add two and a half teaspoons of yeast. So that's one, two, dry out that half teaspoon, and then there's our half. We add that to our warm liquid mixture and we're going to stir it up a little and then we're just going to let that set for three to five minutes until the yeast starts to bubble. Okay so I tried to reposition everything so hopefully you can see what's going on. Um, of course you want to make sure that you put your paddle in your bread machine because that's what does all the work. <laughs> and then we're going to put our liquid mixture into the pan, the bread machine pan. And it's nice and foamy and active and that's what we want. Now this recipe calls for three cups of flour and since we put one-third of a cup in our liquid we need two and two-thirds cup of whole wheat flour.
So there's one. Two. And I don't have a two-third cup cup, so I'm going to do two one-third cups. There's one third. And there's two thirds. And then we are going to use the vital wheat gluten. And when you're using vital wheat gluten with whole wheat, you use one teaspoon for every one cup of whole wheat flour. Just getting the yeast off of this spoon. And there's one, two, three teaspoons of gluten, vital wheat gluten. If you are gluten sensitive or have celiac disease, then you're going to want to leave this gluten out. Okay, so we're going to put it in the bread machine. Lock it in. Most bread machines will have a whole wheat function on them. But I am going to use the white bread function on my bread machine. Because I studied the manual and I compared all the times, the, the mixing times and the resting times and the fermenting times. And I like the, whole, the white bread function better. It, um, I think it fermented for a few minutes longer. Other than that, there was not a lot of difference. And so I'm going to be using the soft white bread function, which is function number one. And I am going to use the two pound loaf size and I'm going to put my color to medium and you can use whichever function works best for you on your bread machine that's what works best for me on this one and we're going to hit start and remember if you've watched my other video after your uh, mix starts to mix a little bit you're going to want to check and you're going to want to make sure that you don't need to add flour or water. You don't want your dough to be too loose or too dry. So don't be afraid to open that lid and see what's going on in here. Just be careful, don't put your finger on the beater and get hurt or anything. But it's okay to open the door. It's okay to take a spatula and rake things off of the side. Now, this dough is looking pretty good. I don't, I don't think I'm going to have to add any moisture to this. I'm going to bring the camera closer and let you see what's going on in here. Whoops. Okay, as you can see, everything is coming together. Now, it is a little stiff, but that's okay. Um, it's sticking to the main thing is it's sticking together and that's what we want and so you can rake all that extra stuff off and make sure it gets it into your dough ball sorry for the terrible filming I'm holding the camera so see how that dough came together and it made this ball of dough and when you're making bread in the bread machine you want the dough to be a little stiffer um, than you would if you were doing it by hand because if it's too loose the bread machine can't do its thing so this is what you want your dough ball to look like if it doesn't look like this if you're seeing a lot of dry flour um, or a lot of dry pieces you're going to want to add water one tablespoon at a time like add a tablespoon of water, let it beat a, a little bit, and if it's still showing a lot of dry, add another tablespoon of water until your dough looks completely wet. If it's too wet, let's say it's not holding a shape, it's just, it's just really uh, loose, then you're going to want to add flour one tablespoon 
at a time until it comes together and holds together like you want it to. And I'll show you this in a few minutes when it keeps beating because it, it will change how it looks. So as it continued to beat, I realized it was a little bit too dry. So I added about a tablespoon and a half of water. And so now you can see what it looks like. It is coming back into the form of a ball the more it beats. So I just wanted to show you all this so that when you're making your bread and you're trying to figure out does it need more water or not, you can kind of see what it's going to look like. And I'll show you what this looks like after a few minutes of beating. So I just wanted to show you after about maybe 10 minutes of it beating, how all that water is gone and absorbed back into the dough ball. And this is what we want. Okay, it is time for one of the most exciting parts of baking bread and that's taking it out of the oven. The next exciting part is slicing it. So it looks like we had a good rise. Hopefully you can see this. That's what you want. You want it to come to about the top of your pan not a whole lot over. And the beater stayed in the pan. That can be a plus. Can you hear that? It sounds good. It smells delicious. And we are going to take a cotton towel and just cover it up a little bit. We're going to let this cool for about 15 or 20 minutes and then we'll slice it open and take a look at how it looks on the inside. I think it's going to be fabulous from what I can tell. So our bread is cool and we are ready to slice it. It smells so good. So I have this little bread slicer here that I got at a thrift store years ago and you may be able to find one at a thrift store or you can order one online. I'll put some links below to Amazon where you may be able to find one. And I'm also using an electric knife. One of my viewers called it a chainsaw. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. But an electric knife just makes slicing it easier. If you don't have an electric knife or even a bread slicer, you can slice your bread with any serrated knife. This just makes the slices come out more evenly. And when, if you are using a bread slicer, always they'll usually be tilted where they're higher on one end than they are the other. And you always want to start slicing on the end that is higher because if you start back here on the end that is lower and start slicing, your bread is going to be in all uneven pieces. They're not going to be even because as you slice the bread, it shifts and moves. So always start up here on the higher end and we are going to slice our bread. I'm not going to slice the entire loaf. I just want to be able to show you what it looks like on the inside and see this crumb. I hope you can see this crumb. It is nice and tight. It is soft just like bread should be. Oh, it smells delicious and it's a wonderful, wonderful bread. It's soft. The, the texture is just fabulous. It's, it's, a, it's a soft, spongy bread. The smell is delicious. I can't wait to eat that. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share and do all those wonderful things that you fabulous viewers do. Thanks for watching.